Hello and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who is helping to lead worship today, I welcome you as we continue our Christmas celebrations, as we have Holy Communion for all people today. I want to extend a special welcome to anyone who may be joining with us for the first time for online worship. We're so just pleased and excited that you've chosen Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, and I hope that you will fill out our contact form. The link to that and the QR code for that are right there for you to be able to use. Please use that so that we can be in contact with you. We can get to know you better, um, that we can connect you with all of the ways that we're able to be in ministry and support and love and service together. And there's also a place there for prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and our prayer team. So we encourage everyone to use that contact form today. As I mentioned, this is Holy Communion for all people today, so I encourage you to get together some bread or crackers or some kind of baked good and then some juice or some kind of a beverage so you can join with us in Holy Communion later on in our time of worship. Now, when we do join in online worship together, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. That means that when we covenant to participate, that we're going to participate in what it is that we're doing. This isn't a random video that you are watching. This is worship with one another, worship of God. And so as such, we encourage you to pray when it's time to pray, to stand up and sing the songs when it's time to sing, to really engage and fully participate in what we're doing together today. And then when we covenant to bless, that means that the way we're in the context section, the way we may be uh, gathered with other people as we're engaging in this worship together today, the way that we're sending it out into the world, that all of it is a blessing to everyone that is involved. So thank you for joining with us in that. Thank you for joining with us in worship today. Please join us in singing People Look East. <laughs> executive director of Compass for Kids. I'm a member of SPRC and also a member of the Young Adult Sunday School class with my husband Rex. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Blessed Lord, into our darkness you have brought the light of your love. This has been a hectic time for so many. We have invested ourselves, our energies, and our resources in a flurry of activities and in much worry. As we now begin a new year, we wonder how we will have the energy the new year will demand. Help us place our trust and our lives in your care. As Joseph listened to the angel telling him to follow, help us follow you in all our ways. Give us strength and courage for the times ahead. Guide us in this time of worship so that love may be the foundation from which all our actions spring. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, please join me in sharing the peace of Christ. You can say, peace be with you, and respond, and also with you. Share that in the comments with one another, with me, and with all the folks in our church community. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And peace be with you. 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 And peace be with you. And peace be with you. Peace be with you. One, two, three. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And peace be with you. Peace be with you. And peace be with you. Peace be with you. And peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. I want you to know that I extend to you the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Peace, 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 peace. Peace be with you. 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 And peace be with you. And I just want to say peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And this is Caleb who's getting baptized today. Peace be with you. 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 And peace be with you. 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 And all God's people said, Amen! Amen. Yay, it is time for small talk, our first small talk of 2022. So I encourage all of the children to come in really close to your device and your screen so that you can hear and see everything that goes on with small talk. Of course, small talk is led by Miss Laurie, our director of children and youth ministries and by her wonderful assistant, Laud the Lamb. So come in close right now for small talk. Everybody, it is Miss Lori and Laud the Lamb and his helper Cohen, and it is a new year. It is 2022. We've said goodbye to 2021, and we're on to 2022, and we have no idea what the future holds. I have here my 2020, 2022 calendar all ready to go, and it has nothing in it. It has a bunch of blank pages because we don't know what the future is going to hold. Please don't choke on your on your New Year's blower. Thing. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. So we don't know what the future holds, but here's what I do know. I know who holds our future, and that's God. So you need to keep that in mind as you're thinking about our future in 2022. God holds our future. And sometimes he makes our plans for us. 
I think he makes them all the time for us, really. Yeah. So, trust in God. Love God starting into this new year. And let's have a great 2022, everybody. How about it, Wad? Oh, it broke. That's not a good sign. Bye, everyone. Good morning. My name is Cindy Arnold, and I am a member here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm also a member of the Young Adult Sunday School class and the Community Garden team. Our reading from the Bible today is Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 through 23. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. Now after the wise men had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled, because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. Some people say that today is International Guest Preacher Day because it is in the middle of all of our holiday celebrations. So in honor of that unofficial holiday, I am delighted to welcome the Reverend Dr. Curtis Brown as our guest preacher. Curtis is, of course, no stranger to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. He works with the youth group. He's a regular greeter for in-person worship. And yes, he is my wonderful husband of 26 and a half years. Curtis is an elder in the United Methodist Church and has served in local church ministries and an annual conference and national denominational leadership all across the United States, from New England to the Pacific Northwest and everywhere in between. Curtis's current day job is serving as the Director of Connectional Ministries for the Illinois Great, Great Rivers Conference of the United Methodist Church. In this role, he helps facilitate mission and ministries of United Methodist Churches when they collaborate together all across Illinois, from camping to disaster response to starting new churches. I am grateful for this guy for more reasons than I can list so. Thank you, Curtis, for your message and for your ministry and for your love every day. One of our family traditions is to hold an all-day movie marathon during the school winter break. Uh, in the past, we've watched uh, all of the Harry Potter movies. We've watched the Lord of the Rings movies, the extended editions, of course. Uh, and a couple years ago, we watched all of the Star Wars movies. Uh, we began with an extended conversation about which order to watch them in, and eventually we settled that we would watch them in release date order instead of in timeline story order, which meant that we started with the original 1977 Star Wars, now uh, termed Episode Four, A New Hope. Now, I've always liked Star Wars, and I've seen all of the movies a lot, uh, 
almost all of them on opening day since 1977. And what struck me in rewatching them all together as a group was the overarching theme of people finding hope. People finding hope even in the midst of what seemed like hopeless situations. They would face impossible obstacles, but still seem to believe in each other and strive towards a better future together. Even when they're up against an evil galactic empire, they still found hope. As 2022 begins, we're staring into a new year and hope is a little bit in short supply for some folks. We're faced with a global pandemic, increasing climate change, foundering political systems, and pernicious racism. Hope seems to be in short supply. So, how do we find hope in a discouraging world? Today's scripture story lets us know that we're not facing a new problem. As an infant, Jesus and his family had to flee a genocidal government, travel across international borders without permission, make a life as refugees and exile, while fearing for their families back home and reliving the terror of the massacre that they fled. Jesus and his family were familiar with trouble. He was born into it. And yet, Jesus had hope and shared hope. How? Today we call Jesus the hope of the world. Where does hope come from? Why are we a people of hope? How do you find hope in a discouraging world? A psychologist named Charles Snyder has been studying hope for the last three decades. In his 1994 book, The Psychology of Hope, he introduces a framework for understanding hope and how it's generated. I think it's helpful for us. He postulates that hope is one, an inward sense of a valuable yet uncertain goal. So an inward sense about a goal that we strongly want but are uncertain we can achieve. And two, that goal has an achievable pathway to success. Uncertain, but achievable. Both elements are important, the goal and the pathway. Hopelessness is rooted in the absence of any one element, a goal without a path, a path without a goal, or neither goal nor path. We can see this in the hopelessness, say, of a dead-end job that doesn't have the promise of adding value to a person's life, a path without a valuable goal. Or in the hopelessness of being trapped in addiction without support for recovery, a goal, freedom, but without an achievable path. Recently, psychologists have been working with this hope theory, and they've been focused on the idea of what makes a path achievable. What is achievable and why? Why do some people find hope of reaching a goal while others in identical situations find only hopelessness? In their research, a big distinction has seemed to emerge between how people see themselves when facing a challenge, whether they are approaching it with a learning orientation or a mastery orientation. These two divergent ways, learning or mastery. Learning orientation means that you believe that you will learn something from every challenge. It means that even if you don't achieve all of your goal or all of your goals, you will learn more about yourself and the challenge and have a better chance of succeeding when you try again. Mastery orientation, on the other hand, means that you believe that you already have all of the available skills and resources you will ever have to meet a challenge. You will either master a challenge or you will fail. If you succeed, you move forward. If you fail, you believe you will never get another chance or never grow any additional skills that might assist you in succeeding on another attempt. 
Learning orientation is always trying. Mastery orientation is one and done. Those with a mastery orientation struggle to find hope when they reach a challenge that requires multiple attempts, or personal development, or adaptive learning. Unlike people with a learning orientation who are always looking to grow their capacity, a mastery orientation leads to seeing difficult goals as unachievable. This diminishes a person's hope, while the same situation engenders hope in those with a learning orientation to challenges. So what does this mean for us at the dawn of this new year? We know that our world is not the way it should be. It's not the world we hope for it, nor is it the world that God envisions for us. We have massively challenging goals for our world, goals of justice and peace and love and reconciliation and safety and thriving for all people. These goals are incredibly valuable. We want them and see their value for us and for others. But the chance of success seems starkly uncertain. How do we find hope? We find hope by taking the next step forward. Hope is generated by taking action along the pathway to our goals, by doing something. We find hope that we can end poverty by helping one person grow through volunteering with our Compass After School program for kids. We find hope that we can release people from addiction by supporting our Wouldn't It Be Lovely ministries. We find hope that we can forestall disastrous climate change through supporting the actions of our green team. We find hope for eliminating racism by our study, by our advocacy and political action, and by our partnerships through the Faith Coalition for the Common Good and the Greater Springfield Interfaith Association. We find hope by doing something to reach our goals. Now, we know that none of the actions will in and of themselves fully succeed in reaching our goals. Christians are a people, however, with a learning orientation. We believe that God is working within us to grow us and develop our collective capacity for loving and living. For Methodists, this is a signature belief uh, called sanctification or holiness. Our learning orientation means that we believe that we will learn something. Even when we fail or have limited success, even when we can only help one person, it advances our goal. Even if we can only help one community, it advances our goal, and we grow and we learn, and collectively we are moving forward. This group will help us when we try again, when we expand and multiply our efforts at larger and larger scale. Now, I know our goals seem daunting and demanding, but Christians believe that we have an advantage that makes even miraculous sounding goals achievable. That when we join together, together to achieve God's goals in the world, we don't do it on our own. We believe that we have assistance. That assistance comes from the collective community of faith that we believe works through generations to achieve our goals. We see justice not as something that's going to happen in our lifetimes, but we see our step in our lives to be part of a greater march moving forward throughout time, generation after generation after generation, to seek justice and hope and reconciliation for all people. We believe that we have assistance from the Holy Spirit that lives within us and empowers us and inspires us and guides us and encourages us and lifts us up, that we are not alone in this work. Each other and God present with us with the power of the Holy Spirit. And finally, we believe that we have God's assistance that we have the promise of success from God that our goals will be achieved. 
that God will step in, and even if we fall short of the goal, God will pick us up and carry us that last yard. We believe that we have hope because God has promised that this world will be made anew and that it will be filled with God's vision of how this creation should be. Hope. In 2022, how do we hope? We hope by remembering our goals, by getting started doing something, and by trusting in God's power to change the world through us and with us and, if needed in the end, change the world for us. Thanks be to God for the gift of hope. Amen. Please join us in singing Hope of the World. Generosity is such an amazing way that we express our hopefulness, particularly as we come into our new year. And I thank you for all of the many ways that you are so generous with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Uh, we thank you for your regular giving. We thank you for your special giving that has gone on and encourage you to continue in that. You can access our online giving through the webpage and also through the links that are available to you right now through the, on the comment section and the QR code. You can always send in donations to our church office as well. And we can help you set up automatic giving if that's what you'd like to do. You can do that with your own financial institution or with ours. And if you need help, just let us know in the church office. Thank you for all of that giving, and I want to remind you that we will continue uh, just for a few more days to receive our special Christmas mission offering. That special offering is going to help support Helping Hands of Springfield and Chaddock Children's Home. If you'd like to get a donation in for that, you can use the online giving option. Just choose Christmas mission offering, or if you send in a check to the church office, put Chris Christmas mission offering in the memo line. And then we encourage you as well to participate in our Raise the Roof roof campaign that's helping to uh, support the ministry that is our facility of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church as we have put on a couple of roofs over uh, this last year. So if you'd like to participate in that, again, you can access that through the online giving. Send in a check directly to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Just put raise the roof in the memo line. Thank you, of course, for all of that generous giving. And I remind you as we get ready for communion that this will be the time for you to pull together your um, bread or crackers or baked good, your uh, juice, your uh, beverage, whatever it is you have for communion, and let's get those things ready now. This is Holy Communion for All People for our first worship celebration of a new year, 2022. In the old song, The Twelve Days of Christmas, today is the ninth day 
the day when the gift is nine ladies dancing. So come to this table of grace, Jesus' table for everyone, and especially for you, whomever you are and wherever you are, with all that you are. Come to this table with your one heart, with two days into this new year, with three gifts, bread and cup, and yourself for sharing. Knowing that there are at least four fellow seekers joining with you, with way more than five hopes for our world. Come to this table even if you want to be laying everything down because you are so weary of being fearful, unsettled, and unsure of the future. Come to this table if you are swimming in wariness, financial risk, or grief. Come to this table if you milked all the joy from Christmas, enough to carry you into 2022, or not nearly enough. Come to this table on this ninth day of Christmas if you are dancing, or if you have stopped dancing, even though you are carrying many gifts, or you need to be healed by watching for Christ's dance in and through our world. Please pray with me. At this, your table, loving God, which we share in many places and at many times, we remember and thank you for this Christmas season and for this new year. Even as pandemic continues, as we may feel unsure and uncertain, we are still filled with hope, true hope that comes from you. We thank you and remember the journey of Joseph, Mary, and Jesus all the way to Egypt and back, we remember the oasis where they probably rested along the way and the people they probably met and shared food and conversation with. We thank you with all that we are as we remember Jesus, born to change everything, who grew up to help people in their hurting and loss, healing, teaching, challenging destructive powers, dying for us, rising for us, making your love for all the world really real. Holy God, we remember how Jesus gathered the friends with whom he had traveled through life, bringing them together for a final meal. We remember that he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this and remember me. We remember how he took the cup, blessed it, gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this and remember me. I invite you to lift up your hands and join me in praying for the Holy Spirit. So pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered in many places and at many times, and pour out your Holy Spirit on the gifts of bread and cup that each of us has brought. Make all these gifts of bread and cup be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we may become one with Christ, who was born, lived, died, and rose to bring healing to a broken world. You can put your hands down. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until we feast together at the heavenly banquet in your eternal realm. For all honor and glory are yours, eternal God, now and forever. And so with you, the confidence of your precious children, loving God, we gather up our concerns and our joys, and we offer them now to you in just these few moments of silence and in the comments. And now, please pray with me together as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Be present at our table, Lord. Be here and everywhere adored. Thy 
The bread and juice, the baked goods and beverage that each of us has brought and that we are about to eat. These are a tangible experience of Jesus' transforming grace and love, feeding us, healing us, and changing us from the inside out. So I invite you to pick up your piece of bread, eat and experience that this is Jesus' love for you. And then I invite you to pick up your cup, drink and experience that this is Jesus' love for you. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Loving God, thank you for feeding us all at your table of healing and grace. Let this meal so fill us that we never lose sight of you or ignore a new year embedded in each new day or forget the invitation of Christ to dance, sing, and live out his love and justice and hope with joy and thanksgiving. Amen. Please join us in singing, On This Day, Earth Shall Ring. You for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It has been such a joy to have this time with you, and I pray that your whole experience has been powerful, that it's been hopeful, that it's been meaningful for you, that you will join with us again for online worship or join with us for worship in the sanctuary as we continue into 2022. I want to encourage you, of course, again, to use that contact form. This is the best way that we'll be able to connect with you to get you our e-newsletter so that uh, you can know about all of the ways to connect and grow and serve in your faith and so that we can also pray with you. Remember, there's a place there for you to put prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and prayer team. So again, I encourage you to use that contact form today. And as you go into your day, go knowing that God loves you completely, that Jesus Christ is the way of hope for us as we head into this new year, and that the Holy Spirit will also inspire that hope for you each and every day. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.